It's that time of the year again. We're all thinking about New Year's resolutions, losing 200 pounds, lifting 1,000 kilograms, running 10,000 miles, or maybe even going to Mars by foot. But what is the reason that so many people cannot keep their resolutions? And what can you do differently according to science, because I do love science, that would actually help you achieve your resolution that's been escaping you for four, five, or six years? The first question is, is it even good to keep a resolution? There's a common held belief that if you tell people your goals, you're less likely to achieve them. Well, Professor John C. Knockross of the University of Scranton conducted some research and he found out that after one week, 75% of New Year's resolutions are still kept. That number drops to 71% after two weeks. Go further a month and it drops to 64%. Go all the way to six months and that number is down to 46%. So half the people that kept the resolutions could not maintain them for half the year. But only 8% of people that kept similar goals but did not keep a resolution managed to keep their goals intact. There are conflicting reports on this and Forbes reports that the average New Year's resolution only lasts 3.74 months with only 13% of resolutions being intact after four months of keeping them. Still, that number is higher than 8% so you should definitely be keeping at least one resolution. But what are some actual resolutions that you can keep? One third of participants or 33% had resolutions around health, particularly physical health, weight loss, going to the gym a particular number of times, or simply working out in any form for a given number of times every week. In fact, 20% of all people had weight loss specifically as their New Year's resolution. 13% of people wanted to change their diet up, eat healthier, or eat different food. And the other minor resolutions were personal growth, work accomplishments, or improvement of financial situations. After you figured out your resolutions, how do you actually keep them? And more importantly, why do most of them not get kept? The first thing you should be doing is framing your resolution positively. This is also called an approach-oriented goal. For example, I want to start cycling this year, or I want to start going to the gym this year. And don't set goals like I want to quit chocolate or abstinence-based goals. Researchers at Stockholm University found out that approach-oriented goals are 12% more likely to be successful than avoidance-oriented goals. You have your approach-oriented statement now, but you still want to make it specific. Statements like I want to lose weight or I want to become rich this year are not specific enough to be attainable. And more importantly, you cannot measure your success or your failure. So instead of saying I want to get rich, say I want to save $10,000 this year. Instead of saying I want to go to the gym, say I want to go to the gym three times a week for the rest of the year. Also make averages your friend. Even if you miss the first week in this example of going to the gym, you can go three extra days in the second week to make up for it. This way you'll keep yourself more motivated if you're in it for a long period of time. Sticking with the theme of not denying yourself completely, you might want to use what's called temptation bundling to help you in succeeding with your New Year's resolution. Professor Katie Milkman of the University of Pennsylvania at the Warden School of Business conducted a study involving 6,000 24-hour fitness participants. The first group of the 6,000 was given a free audiobook when they were on the cardio machine and encouraged to listen to it. The second one was given the free audiobook with no encouragement. And the third one was given no audiobook at all. She found out that the first and second group were 14% more likely to have a workout than the third group. A way for you to do this might be to incorporate what you consider advice after you've done something that you consider productive. For example, if your resolution is to read one book a month, after every book that you've read, you can treat yourself by watching a movie as well. If in fact you do consider movies to be the devil's offspring. Even with all of this, it might be beneficial for you to get a partner or someone to hold you accountable. Researchers conducted a study with over 12 thousand participants and split them into three groups. The resolution for these groups was to work out regularly. The first group was given encouragement and also support throughout the year in terms of workout plans, diet plans, etc. The second group was only given encouragement and the third group received no support and no plans. The first and the second group were significantly more likely to stick with their resolutions and use that encouragement as positive fuel to keep their resolutions. An interesting point to note here is that the second group with less support was more likely to keep their resolutions than the first group that received tremendous support and also workout plans. There's many reasons for this, but one could be that expectations for the first group in their own mind might be much higher that adds to the pressure and might add to anxiety when trying to achieve a goal, resulting in being counterproductive. You have your support now and you have a specific attainable goal framed positively and it might be useful just to keep one goal. Keeping a resolution is extremely popular in America with over 37% of Americans keeping at least one resolution. This is much higher than other countries. For example, in Sweden, 
only 14% of people, according to research, keep a New Year's resolution. The American Psychological Association recommends that you focus on one small goal at a time, since behavior change is extremely difficult, and focusing on changing your entire personality in some cases might take more than one year. So for larger goals, break them down into smaller ones and focus on one goal at a time. You have your goal, you have just one goal, specific, it's attainable, everything's looking perfect, so why wait till the new year to start it off? Start now. Even if it's five days from the new year, you can always start early and make sure you're in the groove when the year actually starts. Even if you break your resolution in let's say April, there's no reason for you to start back again that very same day. A year is just a unit of time and a year can start from April to April or from January to January. So don't wait for an arbitrary starting point just start. And if you break it, just start again. The only thing that matters is that you see some progress, and that progress is most likely not going to be linear, but that's okay. Keeping a resolution allows you to figure out what you like versus what you don't like. A year is a long enough time frame, and if you're doing something every single month, every single week, or maybe even every single day, and you continue to do that for a year, you're going to have a good idea what your true feelings are towards that particular thing. For example, if you start reading a book a month, and after 12 months and 12 books, you reflect and you realize this is not something that was enjoyable for you, maybe you want to take in information in other forms through documentaries, YouTube videos, podcasts, whatever it may be, you know for a fact that reading is definitely not for you. And I think in life, finding things that you don't like is equally important, if not more important, than finding things you actually like. Setting resolutions also allows you to practice prioritization. If you have multiple resolutions, or even if you have one resolution, there's going to be points throughout the year where you have to make a decision. Either you compromise or make a sacrifice and continue that resolution, or you let it go and prioritize something else. In both ways, training this prioritization muscle is good because it trains you to use it in other parts of your life as well. One last personal comment before ending the video is you should only compare yourself to you. As long as you're making gradual improvements, even if it's 0.1% every day, every month, or even every year, you were better than you were yesterday. And that is the only thing that should matter. If you're losing weight and you lose five pounds in a year and someone comes up to you and says, I lost 50 pounds, that doesn't matter because you lost five pounds and are five pounds lighter. If you read 12 books in a year and someone comes up to you and says, I read 12 books every night, that's okay, because you read zero books last year, and you're 12 books better off this year. Gradual improvement is still improvement, and I think that's a crucial point to remember. I haven't set mine up yet as well, so I'm going to do it as an exercise, and you can follow along if you want to. For 2024, I want to try and travel to at least five countries. 2023 was a pretty busy year for me, but I didn't take much vacation. I was busy at work, filming videos, taking care of some personal stuff, but I feel like in 2024, I want to prioritize taking a break, taking some rest, and seeing what the world has to offer. I hope you have a great start of the year. Thank you for watching all the videos, even if you watched only one, and I'll see you in the next one, and also the next year. Actually, let me know your resolutions for next year, and if you actually kept resolutions this year, let me know how that went as well. See you in the next one.